This is Master Your Mindset with Coach Mark. Hey guys, welcome back to another Monday episode. As you've already know, we've changed it up a little bit today. Uh, we're going to be talking about literally um, the five levels of motivation as a leader. And if you see me looking down, because we are going to be posting this up on um, on our social media as well as uh, YouTube, know that I want to make sure that I follow my notes so that way I don't go off on a tangent like I normally do. But today is going to be like super powerful because in this podcast, I'm going to show you how to not only keep yourself motivated, but as a leader, help inspire and keep other people motivated so that you can start and continue to take the actions you want to take, as well as the people who are following you, having them take actions without having to beat yourself up or run yourself into the ground. So I really want to talk about motivation today, sort of from a different perspective, from a perspective of leadership. It's maybe something that you haven't heard of before, but I was recently, um, I was recently teaching in one of our um, training calls that Josh and I are doing, and I was talking about the levels of motivation. It was kind of like one of those things where you don't realize that in the moment when you're teaching it, that you kind of have like been following this framework, and it was just something that was an eye-opening experience, and I was like, you know what, this is something I definitely need to share with the podcast, because I really feel like there's five levels of motivation, and when you understand how these levels like how they function, how you can move from one to the other, what the drawbacks are for each of them. It gives you the ability of making a decision like, hey, am I going to go all in with this and really see the results that I want to see and really allow my followers, the people that I'm leading to really take it to the next level? And if so, this is going to be your podcast today. So I want to um, start off with this. I want to kind of talk about some of the things that I see people do around motivation, that if you're doing any of these things, um, you want to definitely continue to listen to this podcast, right? And that is like you see people whose motivation goes up and down. It's up and down. Some days they take action and others they don't. There might be times when you're trying to get yourself to take action, but you can't really seem to do it. Like some days it just seems so much easier than the others. Or maybe you're like telling everybody what they need to do, but they're actually not showing up and taking those actions. And what we typically do is when that happens, we tend to beat ourselves up about it. We say, well, there must be something wrong with me. There must be something wrong with my motivation. There must be something wrong with X, Y, and Z. But in reality, it has nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with that at all, all right? So this problem though, what it does is it creates less and less people taking inspired action. You're not taking inspired action. When you do take take action, you're just checking the box. You're like saying, oh, I did it today. Let me just do the bare minimum to get by. And then the results that you're getting are not up to the level that you want to get them at because you're not taking from this level of just like total energy. Uh, My mentor, Josh Coach says that when the, fire comes on in the eyeballs, you know that that person is going to do those things that they're saying they're going to do. And that's what happens is you can have this difference between just taking action versus having inspired action. All right. So how do you know if you should listen to this podcast? Well, if your motivation flows up and down, depending on your business, your career, how people are um, around you, how they are, um, if they're motivated or not, whether or not you had something good or something bad happen at work, if you feel motivation is your responsibility and it's your responsibility to motivate everyone else this is also the podcast for you and if you have trouble mo- um, motivating people to take action after you give them your advice this also is 100 percent for you so one of the core principles that we talk about in our 626 program is about is about becoming an influential leader being an influential leader is basically other people are looking to you to take action, not because of what you're telling them to do, but because they feel that it's in their best interest to take that action. And they're taking it because they know you're coming from this place of like, you actually care for them. You're coming from this place of like, hey, I really truly want you to get these results rather than, hey, can you sign up for my program? Can you sign up for this thing so you can pay me some money? And there's a different energy that comes from that, all right? Now, having coached a lot of people myself, Really, I found that there's these five different levels of motivation. So we're going to get into it today, all right? And when it comes to motivation, I want to ask you, what level of leader are you? Okay, what level of leader are you? So as we go through these, right? So I want to talk about the level one, all right? So level one, what I like to refer refer to it as the the dependent leader. The dependent leader. What that means is your motivation is dependent on someone else. If your spouse, if your kids, if your partners, if the people at work, all those things, if they're excited, then you're excited. If they're kind of like depressed, then you're depressed. If they're unmotivated, then you're unmotivated. And really it's it's pretty much the same thing how they feel is the same way that you feel. Now your motivation is dependent on other people and their actions and also the the how they're feeling in that moment. When that's the case, 
you kind of start to live like a life where you're dependent on other people, where you're dependent on whether or not they're excited. You're depending on all those things outside of yourself. And you're starting to create this life that really is not, is not dependent on you. It's entirely dependent on the outside world. Now, if you know what the push method is, we talk about these being facts. There's things that happen outside of us. And typically what we do in this specific incident is we make that stuff mean something about us or we point the finger somewhere else on the outside. We're not taking any responsibility. That's kind of like we're dependent. We're dependent on other people to keep us and keep our motivation high, all right? Now, I remember being this level myself. I definitely remember being this level myself because I was always... I'm um, talking myself out of taking action. And if you realize that you're the person who talks yourself out of taking action, a lot of times it could be the people that you're surrounding yourself with and you're taking on their feelings, their emotions, their thoughts, and you're really getting yourself to not be motivated because you feel that you have to because they're not motivated, all right? Now, level two, level two is when you take a step up from there. I like to call this like the independent leader. And that is like when things start to go sideways, when you start to get that feeling of like, hey, you know what? Like I'm going down this path of negativity. You are able to flip your mindset and you're able to find something to be positive about. All right. Now, this may look like, hey, you know what? When this starts happening, I read some books. I listen to podcasts. I watch videos. I do all of these things. Right. I'm taking all of these kind of actions and it gives me the ability of getting motivated again. All right. And I separate myself, generally, if I'm an independent leader, I separate myself from those negative, that negative stuff, and I just jump into all the positive. And you don't mean, or you don't allow other people's actions to mean something about you. This is something we talk a lot about in life coaching, and that is like when you use um, the results, the actions of others, or something outside of yourself to make it mean something about you, that's never, that's very, very slippery path. All right. Because you're always going to be dependent on somebody else. And instead, when you're the independent leader, you don't have to worry about that because you're like, you know what? I don't make that stuff mean something about me because the thoughts and the feelings and all those things that are happening to me are actually happening to the other person as well. All right. Now, the problem with this level is you keep going through this process every time and you don't really get to the root of what's causing that issue. You're kind of like just throwing stuff on top of it to feel good, right? I know for me, it was like listening to podcasts. It was reading books and it was like trying to, to like literally just switch it around and not actually get to the root of the problem, which is really what life coaching is. It's like, it's called causal coaching for a reason. It's like you get to the root of the problem. You find that limiting belief because if you just keep piling stuff on top, you have to, it's not going to work. You've got to uproot the seed, right? When you plant a seed and you start to get these flowers, whether they're awesome or they're not awesome, right? In your life, you get to this point where you're like, Hey, you know what? Like, I'm just going to throw new seed over it. Right. And that really doesn't solve the problem. And so as an independent leader, you're really not solving the problem because you're just trying to flip it whenever you get that, that feeling of lack of motivation. All right. Now the level three, I like to think of this as like a curious leader. And what I mean by that is like when things start to go down the path of negativity, you take a step back and you get curious. You separate yourself from what's going on. You separate yourself from the situation and you go, huh, this doesn't mean anything about me, but instead, like, I want to actually find out what's causing this, right? What's causing me to feel this way? And when you can get to that, you can see that route. You're like, you know what? I can actually attack this thing and flip it around so much more easier. Now, a lot of times this is what we call like the invisible element. It's really belief, your belief, your thoughts, your stories, all these kind of things will get you to start heading down that path of negativity, right? Let me give an example. So if somebody says like, Mark, you're an idiot. All right, let me, t- let me tell you, first off, being on social media, like if you haven't gotten that, like you're not making the impact that you want to make. I unfortunately get that a lot. I don't necessarily like it, but here's the thing. When somebody tells me, Mark, you're an idiot, I have two, two things that my brain will actually automatically do and I can actually program it. All right. But let me give you the two examples. Number one is like you take it to heart, right? Like if it's your spouse or if it's somebody who's a close friend to you or something like that, like you really take it to heart and you're like, wow, like maybe there's something right. Maybe they're right with that. Right. And you start beating yourself up with that. The second option that our brain can do is say, uh, yeah, like I know you're a troll. I know that my values are not in alignment with yours. I know that you are only making this mean something about you. So that's why you felt the need to be there. Because who on social media is going to spend time to like craft that post or to make that big um, scene in an incident, right? Like for many of us, if we don't agree with something, we just move on, right? And so that is really like what my brain does is it gets curious and goes, huh, like why did that person like make that post? But also like, why am I taking that to heart? 
right? So when I think about like why that person makes the post is because it's flowing through their limiting beliefs. It's flowing through all their stuff. And they're, whether they're labeling me, whether they're, you know, it's something that for them is like really um, maybe a past trauma or something in their life that kind of is coming up. It doesn't mean anything about me. It's entirely about them. But at the same time, why am I taking that? And I'm using that against myself, right? And so it helps me get curious and go, that doesn't even make sense. Now, as a curious leader, it's cool because you have this different level of energy, all right? You can't be angry and curious at the same time. This is the same thing that really helps me with my kids. Because if like, let's say my kids, um, they say something or they do something and it naturally comes out of me of like, as a level of frustration, of ang- I get anger, uh, I get angry. I can immediately think about why would they do that? Or why am I even thinking like, it's something that causes me to feel angry. And what it does is it flips the switch. It takes you away from that specific moment and it gives you that reaction time, right? I think they call it like the difference between or the time between stimulants and stimulus and response, right? So when something happens, you take a second and you go, huh, like, why is it that I'm feeling this way? Why is it that that person felt compelled to do that? And by doing that, you can actually take yourself out of that anger, angry, angry state. Because here's the thing I found whenever I'm angry, like I never lead with doing the right actions, taking the right steps that I need to take in that moment. And when it comes from a place of curiosity and I separate myself from it, it's just a total game changer. All right. And then you can really flow with your motivation from that point. All right. Now, the problem with this stage is that everything needs to be reframed as positive, all right? So you're always looking for, okay, let's think of a positive way about making this spin, right? Which is still, believe it or not, I didn't realize, I thought this was like the end level back in the day. I was like, this is the way that it is, right? You get curious about it and then you flip it, right? But there's a couple pieces that are missing here, all right? There's a couple pieces here and this is gonna get a little bit deeper and I really want you to understand this because I think that when you realize that there's another level, I think it just opens the door for you, okay? And that is level four, all right? When you think about leadership as a level four leader, I like to term this as the self-aware leader, the self-aware leader. So you still take actions to like get curious, to find out why that person did that, why you're doing that, why you're feeling unmotivated and you find that source. But at the same time, you don't immediately try to make everything positive. You don't just immediately flip it, okay? Um, Now, here's the thing. Like, I talk to a lot of people. I coach a lot of people. And some people will bring certain things to me that we talk about, like going to see therapy and, and whatnot. But there's a lot of people who are going to see therapy and they have a life coach because the difference between that is a therapist is somebody who helps you get unstuck, right? You're not, you're stuck. You're not moving at all. A coach helps somebody who's moving, even if it's a little bit and helps them excel and really perform better. All right. So it could be a great mixture of that. But one of the things that if somebody comes up to me and like, let's say they're, they're one of their, um, significant, like somebody significant in their life passed away, right? You're not going to want to flip that around. See, a lot of times we think that everything should be flipped around and everything should be positive. And that's why this is an entirely different level because everything isn't going to be positive. There's this philosophy that I learned from Brooke Castillo that life is 50-50, all right? Life is 50-50. That means 50% of the experiences that you have are going to be great. 50% of the experiences are going to suck. 50% all the time. Like you can't make that equation be 75 positive and 25% not, you know, uh, negative. It's not possible. It's just the way that this works. Now, here's the thing. There's different perspectives. Like if I ever get in a conversation with my mom who is like um, retired now, she's just chilling at home, still working out by the way, and she's um, over 70, she will have a different set of 50-50 than I will. All right. Her 50-50 is like, really? You're going to, that's something that's going to be like consume your whole mindset, right? But my 50-50 is different. But it still doesn't mean that we don't have 50-50. And it still doesn't mean that somebody else's 50-50 is worse or better than yours. It's everybody's 50-50. And when you become a self-aware leader, you realize that there's some things you don't want to flip around. There's some things that you want to sit there. Like if somebody really close to you passed away, you don't want to feel happy about it. You want to actually sit in that. And the reason why is because that person meant something to you. They really, really meant something to you. And when you realize that somebody meant something to you, you're supposed to feel this way. It's a part of being alive. If you flip it around, honestly, I don't feel like you're doing yourself a a disservice. You're actually doing yourself a disservice because you're running from processing, all right? We haven't talked about processing pain here. It's something I teach my master coaches. But processing pain is like, it's not running from pain, all right? It's It's not pushing back or overreacting to pain, right? It's actually being able to sit in that pain and go, you know what? I'm supposed to feel this way. 
That's why I'm talking about this being a little bit of a different level, right? Because you're able to like have these things happen to you. You get like to this point where you're not motivated and you're okay with that. You're like, this is a part of the game, right? I'm not going to be motivated all the time. I'm not going to be like always excited on doing things. Yeah, I would like to be able to flip things around when they do, when, when there is a situation for me to be able to flip them around, right? But in a situation that doesn't need to be flipped around, I just need to sit in that and go, okay, this is trying to teach me something. What is this trying to teach me, right? And really being able to sit there and process it and not come up from a place of beating yourself up because you're a human being. This is the way that emotions work. This is the way that your brain works, all right? So just being compassionate with yourself and just sitting there and going, you know, what can I do for myself that isn't trying to fix this, but it's just me being compassionate to myself. And what you realize is that when you can do that, you can get to level five. Level five is what we term the influential leader. That's what we're creating inside of our 66. We're creating people who are those influential leaders. And what you do is you now teach others how to do that. You teach them how to understand motivation. You teach them how to not have to flip everything from negative to positive. Yes, there's some certain situations that I'm going to be on a, a call with you. And I'll be like, is that something you want to change? Because if so, we can. But if not, I want to let you know that's totally cool if you don't, because sometimes we just need to sit in it, right? And that's the ability that we get. We get the ability of teaching other people how to do it. And that's the level five influential leader. Now, here's the thing. Um, you may find yourself in one of these areas, all right? And I want you to know that there is no judgment and no shame, no matter where you are here. The power of, I mean, really one of the most powerful things in life is having awareness. When you are aware of this and you know there's another level, it just opens your mind. But what I don't want you to do, and this is something that I had done for decades, is sabotage yourself. Meaning you use it against yourself because you should have done this. You should have known that. You wish you were better. You're not a good leader. All those things, those are not helpful at all. You will never go down the path of actually impacting people's lives like you really, the potential that you have inside of you, if you beat yourself up. And then for anybody who has kids, I want you to realize this too, your kids seeing you be, see you beat yourself up. They don't have to be physically present. They can actually just see what's going on in here by through your actions that you're taking, all right? So do not allow this podcast, the push method, anything that you learn from me, from Josh, to affect you in a way that makes you feel like you're being judged or shamed because there's no positive effects of that, all right? All right, guys, so what level are you? What level are you? Now, I want to ask you a few questions. This is something I'm going to be doing a lot on the podcast. And if you're just driving, I want you to like pause after I ask these questions because I really, I love the power of questions, all right? What the power of a question does is it helps you identify what the answer is for you. It's saying that there are infinite answers that are out there because guess what? There really is. There's not a set amount of answers. When I give you a sentence, when I say, this is what you should do, this is how you should do it. What you're, what I'm basically saying is, and I, I like, I didn't know I was conveying this until like I understood this philosophy. When I say that, what I'm saying is the answer is contained in here. And if you can't, this doesn't work for you. There's something wrong. There's something wrong with you. There's something wrong with whatever. But when I ask you a powerful question, you start getting more powerful answers. I mean, some questions that are not so powerful are like, why isn't this working for me? What's wrong with me? Why is this the case? Those, those answers are never positive. But if you can reframe those questions and you have powerful questions, you can actually pull yourself to create and find not only the uh, answers inside of you, but the results that you truly want on the outside, right? So if you made it to the next level of your leader motivation, what kind of impact would it make on you? What kind of impact would it make on your family? And what kind of impact would it make on the world? So if you leveled up your leadership, even to the next level, what kind of impact would that have? What would it make possible in your life that's not possible right now? Now, I want to ask you, what do you need to do to make that happen? What do you need to do to make that happen? I say this all the time on the podcast. You don't get better by consuming. You get better by acting. So when we find that belief, that belief is like, I can do this. I just need to take that next step. Then it's identifying what that next step is. And I don't want you guys, I don't want to let you guys off the hook and just saying like, just thinking about this is going to be the awesome. It's going to make you take action. Also identifying, Hey, what does that look like? What does that look like on the outside? Right? We know on the inside starts with a belief, but on the outside, it looks like action. All right. So what do you need to do to make that happen? And are you willing to put in the work to do that, to get there? to elevate. Now, what does that look like? That's going to be something that's dependent on you. I know a lot of people do journaling. 
A lot of people do reflecting at the end of the night. A lot of people do check-ins. A lot of people have life coaches. A lot of people have mastermind teams. A lot of people have accountability partners. Whatever that would look like for you, being doing this without just being you, that's where the power is. And of course, if you want our help, me or Josh, if you go to mindsetwithmark.com forward slash discovery, um, we will be able to help you out depending on if you want coaching around yourself, you want to learn the skill of coaching, you want to help create a business, whatever that looks like for you, okay? All right, guys, I greatly appreciate you making it here to an end of another show. I hope this show has been powerful for you. Please share it with anybody you think would be um, would love this information, anybody who wants to become that influential leader. I greatly appreciate you for everything that you're doing out there, and I look forward to seeing you guys on Thursday. All right, bye, everybody.